they'll be taking phone numbers right after the service and putting you on the waiting list. But <laughs> great job. It's always a pleasure of any father or any mother to see their kids serving the Lord and, and uh, a blessing to hear them sing unto God. Thank you, boys. Great job singing. Well, tonight we begin this series uh, through the book of the Gospel of Luke and uh, looking forward to what God has in store for us. Tonight we're going to basically talk a little bit about who Luke was, a little bit of his background history, and then we're going to look at those first four verses and, and see what the Lord has for us tonight. This missionary doctor uh, was most likely from the city of Antioch. Antioch was one of those uh, 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 destination spots on Paul's missionary journeys. There were many people there in Antioch that professed to be Christians. In fact, uh, it was at Antioch that they were first called Christians. And we said this morning, to be a Christian means to be Christ what? Christ-like. And uh, would, would be to God that all of us were Christ-like, not in name, but in deed also. And this missionary doctor here, be him being a physician, uh, wrote two books of the Bible. Uh, the one we're looking at, the Gospel according to Luke, and then also uh, we know him to be the author of Acts. And we really uh, enjoyed our time going through the book of Acts uh, it's been several months ago now, but it took us quite a while to go through the entire book of Acts. But um, oftentimes you will see the humble servant Luke refer to himself with the pronoun we. As you read through the book of Acts and you see Paul speaking about someone, then he, and then you'll see someone say, we did this or we did that. It was usually referring to Paul, and Paul was a very humble man. Uh, you know, though he was a physician and probably very intelligent person, uh, he was very humble. And by the way, God uses humble people. The Bible says in Luke chapter 14, verse 11, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth, humbleth himself shall be exalted, shall be exalted. So God loves humility. God loves humble people. Some of the greatest used people in the Word of God, some of the greatest people used in modern day history have been people that have come humbly to God. God doesn't like to use those who come to God and say, hey, I got a lot to offer you, God. What do you, what do you want? You know. Now listen, if God's given you talents, He wants us to come to Him, but He wants us to come with a humble spirit. When we're proud and cocky and feel like we have something to offer the world, uh, uh, God, God's not so apt to use those individuals. But those who come to God and say, God, I'm not much, but all, I will use every part of me and every talent and every gift that you give me, Lord, I'll give those to you. God says, I like that type of person. I can use that type of person. Luke was that type of individual, was very, very humble. The Gospel of Luke focuses on the humanity side of the Lord Jesus. As we look through each Gospel account of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see different writers give a different perspective or different character trait of Jesus. When we look at the Gospel of Luke, we see that Luke is pictured as the Son of Man. The Son of Man. He, want, he wanted to portray, of course, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wanted to convey to mankind the humanity of God, the human nature of God. Why? So that we could relate to him. Amen? Uh, aren't you glad that God came in the form of man? Hey, God knows the pains that you go through. He knows the heartaches that you experience. He knows the sorrows that you have. God knows the temptations that you face. Why? Because God came in human flesh in Jesus Christ. And thank God for that. And so the Gospel of Luke shows us the humanity of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the perfect human being in life and in character. Luke, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wanted to show us a mankind or a man of a, uh, who was a loving man, a compassionate man, who was concerned with all of our sorrows as well as our souls. Amen? 
He portrayed a man that was all the pattern that we need for our lives. If we're going to pattern ourselves after anyone that has ever walked the face of this earth, obviously we need to pattern our life after the life of Jesus Christ. He was that second Adam from above. You know, you sing that song, second Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. Hey, who was that second Adam? That was Jesus Christ. He came in the form of man, but not just any man. He was God incarnate. Amen. And he was willing to come and he was willing to die. And by the way, he died an awful death. In the flesh there, he experienced great pain and sorrow for us. Why? So that we might have heaven eternally. Jesus truly was a man of sorrows and acquainted with our griefs, as Isaiah said. Tonight, I want to uh, I want to preach on this. The Bible says here from Luke chapter 1, For as much as many have taken in hand to set him forth a order of declaration. The title of my message this morning, pardon me, I don't have any slides tonight, but the, uh, the message, you'll have to pay attention on purpose, okay? Uh, the title of the message is A Declaration. A Declaration. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray tonight that you would please use this message. Lord, as we see uh, Luke, a humble servant of yours, willing to be used so that we can have an account, account of your life, uh, showing a, 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 a man that was acquainted with sorrows and griefs and and you were a humble servant lord and you came and did the will of your father and lord i pray tonight that we too would see your humility we would see your pattern of uh, of humbleness and that we would mimic that as the uh, as you did as the son of god in jesus name we pray amen I want to give you a couple points tonight. First of all, we see here that Luke received the gospel. Luke received the gospel. The Bible says in verse 1, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. First of all, we see that, the, uh, uh, that Luke here was someone who was giving a declaration or he was rather, I'm sorry, he was receiving something that he believed in. Amen. And by the way, before you uh, 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 give anything out, you must first receive it and believe it yourself. You know, it's hard to tell somebody else the truth if you don't know the truth. Are you with me? And so Luke here, he received something that he first believed, but also he said that it was believed among us. There were obviously other Christians that believed like Luke did. And by the way, I want to say tonight, you may look and say, boy, there's hardly anybody that believes what I believe in. No, there are many people that believe in the name of Jesus Christ, but not all are willing to profess it. I believe we're going to be very surprised up in heaven someday at the great multitudes of people that have believed on the name of Jesus Christ. Not all of them have been disciples of his, but many have believed on the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse number, verse number two, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. You see, Luke uh, was not a Jew. Some, some think, well, he must have been a Jew. But in the book of Acts, and I'm not going to go into all the background detail, but uh, uh, Luke was rather a Gentile. He was not of the circumcision, as Paul was uh, mentioning, of some of those who were the Jewish believers. He was not one of those 70 that received the gospel on the day of Pentecost, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and were sent out. He was not of those, but he was one that believed on the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was one of those Gentile believers. And by the way, thank God tonight as Gentile believers that that gospel that was first given to the Jews has been given to both Jew and Gentile. And thank God that we've received that. He was a Gentile and most likely from that city of Antioch where they were first called Christians. He was able to not only believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ that was given to us, but also 
he was able to be a missionary with the apostle or, or with the apostle uh, Paul, and he was able to go and give the gospel to all parts of Europe, from Asia all the way to Europe. Thank God for this man by the name of Luke that received this gospel. There were many, the Bible says there were many eyewitnesses accounts of the resurrected body of Jesus. It was uh, seen by his disciples. Uh, it was seen by great multitudes of people. You know, people, uh, 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 even today, I think recently my wife and I were watching some documentary and, and uh, they were trying to debunk the resurrection. And man has always tried to debunk the resurrection, even from the, the, the days following the resurrection. Oh, they must have stole his body or they must have, uh, it must have been a hoax. Uh, he really was there, but you know, there was some fog that came in. I mean, there's all kinds of, uh, 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 of, uh, of uh, conspiracy theories to try to debunk the Lord's resurrection. Why is it? Because if we do not have a resurrected Savior, folks, we do not have salvation. Because how can we believe on someone who could not even rise from the grave? Amen? But the Bible says there were many eyewitnesses. And so Luke not only received the Word of God, but he also received eyewitness accounts. Well, can you imagine getting to talk with someone and they say, oh yeah, I, I saw Jesus. I saw the resurrected body. I saw the miracles that He performed. I was right there. What a wonderful testimony. But you know what? Luke didn't just receive it. He did something with it. He was given the gospel, but what was he going to do with that gospel that he received? My question for you is, what will you do with what has been given to you? Luke received the gospel from someone else. Someone had to get the gospel to Luke. This afternoon, uh, uh, we were having lunch with some of our church members, and as we were eating there, uh, the conversation came up about how it seemed uh, sometimes unfortunate that maybe uh, people like in countries like North Korea, where they don't have the internet or don't uh, churches are illegal in, in places like that where the gospel cannot be heard clearly or if uh, it's against the law to even practice any form of a religion how is it fair that god would send people to a hell when they have not had an opportunity to clearly hear hear the gospel and my, my wife and i she, uh, she i was giving my explanation my wife brought up a very valid point you see, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that there were people from all nations that were there. And they heard the gospel, but guess what? Not all of those pass, or not all of those who gave the gospel to someone else, someone along the line, what? They dropped the ball. Someone did not pass on that gospel to that next country, to that next nation to that next generation. Hey, my question for you tonight, hey, who told you about Jesus? Who gave you the gospel? Now my question is, what are you going to do with it? Hey, Luke was given the gospel. He received the gospel. There were people that were eyewitnesses that were there and they saw the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what if they just kept their mouths shut? What if they never told somebody else about it? But you know what Luke was faithful in doing? Luke said, I have been given the gospel and I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it and I'm going to give it to someone else. My question for you tonight is what will you do with the gospel that has been given to you? Luke received it, but he didn't just keep it. He delivered it to someone else. Hey, Will your next generation, I'm looking at some of you young adults. We have a lot of young adults here at our church. I'm looking at this next generation. What will you do with the gospel of Jesus Christ? You've had people that have, have had to sacrifice and people that have, have received the gospel. And boy, we, we look at the, uh, the trail of blood of the early Christians who, who had to literally go into catacombs and underground. And, and many of them were boiled with oil and some were torn asunder and some were, were persecuted and, and, and some were even crucified so that we might have the gospel. And here we sit in America where freedom 
of religion is still practiced today. And we have the freedom to get the gospel to our next generation. But what are we doing about it? Amen? What are we doing about it? Luke received the gospel, but he had to get it to someone else. So we see, first of all, that Luke received the gospel. And then number two, we see that Luke declared the gospel. The Bible says there in verse number one, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Hey, to declare something is to say it out loud. <laughs> Amen. Hey, if you have received the gospel tonight, who have you declared it to? Who have you declared it to? But pastor, I'm very introverted. I'm shy. I don't like to talk to people. People scare me. <laughs> hey, anybody can take one of those. Anybody can take one of these gospel tracks and, and leave it at a gas station. Anybody can take one of these gospel tracks and leave it on the uh, 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 restroom sink. I think about a lady in my wife's church that uh, uh, she was saved because someone left a gospel track on the sink. And I think it was a Walmart bathroom, if I remember the story correctly. And every day she would see that gospel track and she'd throw it in the trash. And finally, after throwing it in the trash day after day, she finally said, well, I might as well read what's on here. It must be pretty important. And she got saved. Hey, how about you, Christian? You've received the gospel like Luke, but who have you declared it to? Hey, Luke had talents. Luke had a lot to offer this world. He was a physician. He healed people. He healed people's bodies. But let me tell you something tonight. The greatest healing that you can ever give is the healing balm of Jesus Christ. And giving somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ is the greatest thing you could do for them. Luke's job was to declare the gospel. Luke's job was to, to declare those things that, by the way, that he believed. Hey, how can you declare something you don't yet believe? Hey, do you know whom you have believed? Huh? Uh, for Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For this cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hey, do you know whom you have believed? Do you know? If you know whom you believe, then declare it. Amen? Yeah, I'm not saying you got to go on the corner of a street and hold up a sign, Jesus saves, though that's not a bad idea either. But why don't we go, hey, why don't you start going to your neighbor? Go into, hey, start with your family. I don't know about you, but I want to make sure my mom and my dad and my brother and my sister, and my cousin, aunts and uncles, I want to make sure that they're saved and that they're going to be able to experience the joys of heaven with me. How about you? Declare the gospel. If you've believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you and I have an obligation to bring the gospel to the world. Amen? Hey, the Bible told us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, to go into all the world. Or that's Matthew. But the Lord told us to go into both Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Amen? God wants us to give the gospel to Jerusalem. You mean I got to get on a plane and fly over to Jerusalem and give the gospel out? Hey, our Jerusalem is, is our home. To give the gospel to our home. To Judea, to, to that area around our home in our community. To Samaria, those outlying cities that are around us. And to the uttermost parts of the world. Hey, thank God we had a missions emphasis month. And many of you have committed to give to faith promise giving. Hey, don't quit on that giving. Hey, you are having a part in seeing someone else's soul saved by every dollar, nickel, quarter, penny, whatever you give to God. Amen? Because God wants us to declare the gospel. Luke received it. He, he, he saw those who were literal eyewitnesses of it. He received it, but then he declared it. Not only do we see that Luke received the gospel, 
but he declared the gospel, but also Luke delivered the gospel. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write thee an order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. You see, Luke wrote to Theophilus, and by the way, his name is also mentioned in the book of Acts. And that name, Theophilus, means this. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct. I think Brother Ramuda probably uh, pronounced it better than me. But it means this. It means a lover of God. A lover of God. You see, you and I have a responsibility to not only deliver, declare the gospel to, uh, to believers, but it's also our responsibility to deliver it to them, amen? To deliver it them so that they can do something with it. Once we've declared the gospel and people are saved, you and I must teach them to go and do likewise. Hey, isn't that the, the, the great commission? To win people to the Lord? To baptize them in the name of the, Lord, uh, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? And then to teach them? Hey, that is our responsibility as believers tonight. Luke received that gospel and then he declared it. But then his next responsibility was to teach others to go and do likewise. Here it is. He delivered this message to Theophilus, a lover of God. You see, in the Christian life, there are many stages of believers. There's, there's new believers, someone who just gets saved. I love new believers. <laughs> uh, they're so excited, amen, when someone gets saved and, and they just have that. We, we, we've had some folks in the past uh, five or six months that have got saved at our church and, and you can just see it. They're just like, you know, it's like they're stuck with the smile all the time, you know. They're so happy about everything going on in church. And then you have baby Christians, those who are growing in the Lord and, and the things are still fresh to God and they're learning things and they come, oh, pastor, I read this in the Bible this week. And, and you're like, and, and as a mature Christian, you go, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. But you, you're excited for them because they're growing in the Lord. And then you have mature Christians, those who are getting into the deep things of God and, and they're studying God's word and they have a great relationship with God. Hey, we need to be teaching all those groups of people. I'm thankful for our Sunday school time that we have at our church, amen? The time where we teach, and, and we have teachers that teach new believers, and we have teachers that uh, teach kids and, and older, uh, uh, older folks, and we're teaching them the things of God, the doctrines of God. But not only that, but we're also teaching them to go and do likewise. Teaching them how they can re reproduce. Hey, Luke was a good, uh, uh, not only was he a good declarer of the gospel, but he also was a good deliverer. Hey, something had been given to him and he decided to deliver it, to pass it on to someone else. Amen. You and I must teach the truths that have been passed down to us. What did someone teach you about the Christian life? You know, some of you, you, you if I were to go to you, you'd say, Boy, so and so, and they taught me uh, 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 in the in the Christian life how to start reading my Bible, and they showed me where to start. They taught me how to have a prayer life. They taught me how to tithe. They taught me how to to uh, grow in my Christian life and have a deeper walk with God. They taught me some standards in my life that I should live by, and now I'm developing my own standards in my Christian life. Hey, someone has invested in your life. Someone has invested in you and they've taught you what, by the way, probably what someone taught them. It's a chain effect. Amen. Someone taught them. They taught you. And now you are to be teaching someone else. Hey, that's what this Christian life is all about. Amen. It's not about just soaking up knowledge for ourselves, but it's about passing it on to someone else. That's what the commission was before Jesus said, before I go to my father, I'm, I've got a job for you to do. I don't just want you to sit around here and do nothing. 
I want you to go and deliver my gospel and I want you to give them the truths that I taught you, that I taught my disciples, disciples. I want you to teach that to the, uh, uh, to the 70 and the 70 to the 120 and the 120 to the uh, uh, 2,000, 2,000, 5,000 and so on and so forth. I want you to continue to deliver that to the next group of people. Luke said that the things that he was passing on was certain things. Hey, he believed them. He had a good grounding in those, and they were, they were foundational in his life. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things. When we know something is truth, and we deliver it to someone, we need to deliver it to them as truth. We need to be careful about casting doubt on the Word of God. Sometimes older believers, more mature believers, we... We, well, you know, the Bible really means this. <laughs> if God wanted it to mean that, he'd say that. Amen. So let's, let, let's not get too smart for our pants, <laughs> if that's a thing. All right. Let, let's not get so brilliant that we start casting doubt on the word of God. Hey, if it's been delivered to you of certainty, then with certainty, let's give it to the believers after us. Amen. The, uh, the man Luke, the Gentile physician, missionary, doctor, uh, eyewitness, or wasn't an eyewitness, but he was able to pass on that eyewitness account. That same man, not only did he show the humanity of Jesus Christ, but it's also significant to note that he spoke of prayer more than any other gospel. Prayer was, prayer was very vital to Luke. And Luke talked many times in his gospel about prayer and the importance of prayer. Not only that, but it's interesting to note that uh, uh, Luke spoke about the Holy Spirit more. I believe it was 17 times just in the book of Luke that he spoke about the Holy Spirit. We see that uh, shortly after uh, uh, as he speaks about uh, John the Baptist. Amen. Amen. And, and he spoke about the importance of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life 17 times, if I'm not mistaken, in Luke. And then in the book of Acts, oh my, boy, the book of Acts is just packed full of instances where the Holy Spirit moved in the believer's life. Hey, let me, let me say tonight that the Holy Spirit and prayer are so important and they ought to be synonymous in every believer's life. I was speaking to my men's class, a faithful men Bible class um, about the importance of, uh, of men and godly men having a consistent prayer life. If there's one thing that's probably preached more from pulpits but done the least in churches is prayer. Prayer. We talk about it, but we rarely do it. And Luke showed the importance and power of prayer. Hey, those things of certainty that were passed on. Luke says, boy, I've talked with eyewitnesses. The Lord has, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Lord has given me this gospel and I'm going to be faithful to talk about the importance of prayer and the importance of the Holy Spirit's work. But I'm also going to be faithful to give that same gospel that was handed down to me, received by me. I'm going to be faithful to declare it and deliver it to that next generation so that they might have something to pass on. Hey, if something's been delivered to you, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Don't. Uh, it's Super Bowl tonight. If you're a running back, the worst thing you can do is drop the ball. <laughs> In football, they say if you're, a, if you're a running back, when you get that ball, tuck that under there and hold it, hold it with dear life because everybody's after that thing. Hey, listen, the gospel has been handed to you. Grab it. Hold on to it. Don't drop the ball, but also give it to the next generation. Start with your family. Start with your, uh, 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 those that are close to you, maybe your neighbors, your coworkers, and then be faithful to give the gospel. Like Luke, he wasn't just content with giving the gospel there to the people in Antioch. He went further and gave the gospel from Asia all the way to Europe. Thank God tonight that he was part of that missionary team with Paul, or you and I might not have the gospel tonight. Hey, what if Luke did not deliver the gospel? 
where would you be tonight? Think about that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray tonight this, this little introduction in Luke's, as we've seen in the Gospel of Luke tonight, and how important it is that we declare the Gospel that